Hi guys and welcome back to Film Live at NAB 2015. I'm here on the Black Magic stand who for the third year running have surprised us with a whole range of new cameras and bits of equipment. First of all there's a new sensor which is an upgrade for the Blackmagic Ursa camera but is also going to be in the new Blackmagic Ursa mini camera which we're going to talk a bit a little bit later. Um, here to tell us a little bit more about it is Simon Westland. Hi Simon, how are you doing? Thank you very much for seeing them, thank you. Time to see us again. Um, you, you guys seem to have a bit of a trend over the last couple of years. Um, you managed to keep things under wrap, uh, certainly a lot better than other companies, um, certainly better than Apple does. Um, and every single year you seem to kind of steal the show with some big announcement of an exciting new camera that everyone's interested in. And this year is no different, you've got a whole bunch of new stuff available. Uh, let, let's start with the, the sensor, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, well thank you for your comments, it's, it's, it's greatly appreciated. I think it's, it's, uh, you know, it's interesting that, that we're still new kids on the block when it comes to camera manufacturing. Uh, it's only three years since we, we released the original cinema camera. Um, but yeah, you know, yes we have developed a bit of a reputation for, for developing new things and doing it quickly. The new 4.6K sensor um, is the product of extensive development uh, for, more than the, for more than a year. We've been working on this for some time. Um, really to deliver as a sensor that, give to, uh, that gave to us the wide dynamic range that we were looking for. And we achieved that with 15 stops of dynamic range. So really what that means is we're getting closer to emulating film. Than, than we ever have before. Um, and I think that, you know, outperforming some film stock at, at sort of 15 stops of, uh, 15 stops of range. So it's a Super 35 sensor, um, and will work in both global and rolling shutter. Uh, so depending upon the cameras that we're using it in, we'll deliver a certain amount of frame rates per second, uh, depending upon the camera body. Um, but yeah, So, so uh, just, 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 just on that point, uh, that, that's quite interesting, because I've never really heard of that in other cameras before, where you get the choice to go between rolling and global shutter. Um, what, what, what's the implications of that? Is there any um, trade-off for doing that? Yeah, there is, there, is, there is to a degree. What it gives people is it gives the user a choice depending upon the material that they're shooting. Um, typically, we can, we can pull higher frame rates um, you, you know, in terms of the rolling shutter uh, aspect. So we're going to give users the ability through the menu systems within the camera, the opportunity to change the way that that sensor operates and put it into either a rolling shutter mode or a global shutter mode. So obviously if they're working with, with high degrees of motion, then the benefits of a global shutter are, are, are obvious. So I think that you know if you're shooting ultra HD, uh, you know, and you're dealing in high motion, then you know you, you, you're going to trade that off depending upon the type of shoot that you're undertaking and what you're looking to achieve. And just remind me, what what other frame rates that you can get from glo using global shutter and rolling versus rolling shutter? Well, well, well. Typically, the frame rates are halved in global shutter mode to to rolling shutter. So where we would get um, in in the brand new Ursa Mini, where we would get 60 frames rolling shutter, we'll get 30 frames global shutter. Alrighty. And upgrade path. What what's the um When's it coming out? How can people get their hands on it? For existing Ursa users, is there a kind of priority for, for, for those guys? Yeah, sure, and I think that's a really interesting and, and, and valid point because when we came to NAB last year, we talked a lot about the uh, the full size Ursa being a user upgradable camera, uh, and and I think you know what's great is we come back 12 months later and we're showing people that you know that's a promise we're fulfilling with the new 4.6K sensor. We are going to prioritise the availability of that 4.6K sensor for customers with Ursa that want to change that sensor block. Um, so we're looking at the end of June uh, to start moving those into the hands of, of customers but already it was really interesting yesterday at NAB um, speaking to a whole bunch of customers with Ursa that were incredibly excited that yes they could come in straight away and look for that new 4.6k sensor so that very much was the intention uh, the promise and, and we're happy to deliver on that within within a relatively short time frame and um, you guys over the last few years have kind of gave shipping times and not, not always necessarily met them. Yeah. Uh, June sounds quite optimistic, <laughs> certainly for you guys. Um, I mean, how, how realistic do you think that is? I mean, is, is that shipping times? Is, is is there a more realistic time that people will actually get their hands on by the time it's gone to the dealer and then, and then came through to them? Or 
the, our lead time in production of this particular sensor has been a lot greater. So we, we've afforded, to some extent, um, you know, a lot more time in preparation. I think that you know, you, one of the things that you always have to balance against any estimated lead times and delivery is demand. You know, we don't know whether that's going to be you know a hundred people or a thousand people or whatever that want to want to upgrade to that new sensor block straight away. Obviously, we've made some estimations with, in regard to that, but clearly demand will have an impact. Um, yeah, and you're right about delivery dates. You know, it's something that that, that that we're very keen to always hit those. One never knows in the whole production of, of a camera. You know, we, we you find out the hard way. These are difficult things to make. You know, these are this is not an easy product line to to to, to achieve the aims. And, and one of the things that we stand by is that you know where we've incurred a delay before, we've done so because we've not necessarily been happy uh, that we're at the point that we wanted to release it. And I think you know, so you always trade those things off. We, we you know we we are certainly um, very hopeful that that end of June date is when we'll start to see those go out into the hands of existing URSA customers. Um, it will be limited and it will ramp up, uh, but certainly we think by that point we'll be starting to move these into, in, into their hands. Thank you very much Simon, so I think next we're going to have a look at uh, some other cameras, but until then...